In this video, we are going to explore eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and their properties. So we're going to look at how to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues and what exactly does it mean. Eigenvectors and eigenvalues um, are seen in a wide range of fields, including finance, um, mechanical engineering, image processing, quantum mechanics. So what is it? Well, suppose A is a square matrix of size n, and we have this vector that is not the zero vector, and the entries come from a complex of n number of entries. And lambda is a scalar in the complex numbers. Now, of course, this can be brought down into the real numbers as well. Then we say x is an eigenvector of A with eigenvalue lambda, if I take my matrix A, multiply it by my vector, and it's equivalent to the scalar lambda multiplied by that vector x. So let's do an example. Before we do that though, let's, let's look at this theorem, and all of the theorems of course are in your book for your viewing pleasure, pleasure. Suppose A is a square matrix, then A has at least one eigenvalue. So this is guaranteeing that if I have a square matrix, I will have at least one eigenvalue. Here's my first example. I have a two by two matrix square. I'm trying to decide whether or not U1 and U2 and U3 are eigenvectors for A. <clears throat> and if they are, to find the associated eigenvalue. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and multiply my matrix A by my first vector. So here's my matrix A, I multiply it by A, and I multiply my first vector, and I've got 35 and 28 which you can see is the same thing as if I factor out a 7 out of both 35 and 28 and factor out a 7, I get 5 and 4. So I got back to where I started. I have the same vector, 5 and 4, and 7 would be my multiplier. So my lambda associated with u sub 1 would be 7. That would be my, my um, kind of like my uh, scalar multiplier. So then we're going to calculate whether or not u2 is in the... Um, is an eigenvector. So again, we take our matrix A and we multiply it by our second vector, and we get 7 and 14. And then we, um, we can factor out a 7, right? And if I factor out a 7, so out of 7 and 14, I can factor a 7 out. That leaves me 1 and 2. But this is not equal to that. So those are not equal. So we know that u2 is not an eigenvector associated to a. So then let's check the last one. So u sub 3, I'm going to multiply it by a, and I end up with 2 and negative 2 when I do the multiplication, which I know I can pull a negative 2 out. And the reason I pulled the negative 2 out is because I need to have it as a negative 1, 1. So I pulled out a negative 2, and I get negative 1, 1 in those two positions. So we see that I can write um, a times my vector u as a scalar multiple times my vector u sub 3. So we know that u sub 3 is an eigenvector and it's associated with the um, scalar multiple, if you will, of lambda if it's equal to negative 2. Now let's see if we can find the eigenvectors associated to the given eigenvalues. So the first thing we're going to do is say, okay, lambda is equal to 3 and lambda is equal to 2. What are the eigenvalues? These are the eigenvalues. What are the eigenvectors associated to those given this matrix? So we know that with lambda is equal to 3, it has to satisfy this equation. My matrix A times U must be equal to 3 times my matrix U, or my vector U. And since U, 3 times U, is the same thing as 3 times the identity matrix, of size 3 times u, then our equation becomes this. a times u is equal to 3i times u. Bring in the 3i um, three i sub 3u to the other side. I end up with this, and I can factor out a matrix, and I can factor out the 3, and I can factor out the identity matrix, and I get just the u matrix um, multiplied by a my A matrix minus 3 times my identity matrix size 3. So then I'm just going to focus in on that part of it. Now if I focus in on just that part of it, 
Then I'm going to get, here's my A matrix. Here's three times my identity matrix of size three. I do the subtraction and I get this matrix. Now I'm going to take this matrix and I'm going to augment on a column of zeros. So I'm going to make it into a homogeneous system because I want it to equal the zero vector. So I'm going to turn it into a homogeneous system and I'm going to row reduce it. And when I row reduce it, I'm going to get this matrix. Now these are e row equivalent matrices. And then what I'm going to find is that if I continue to row reduce this in the true reduced row echelon, I'm going to get a one here, a zero here, a one here, and I'm going to get some fractions here. Now, if I write that so there are no fractions and I solve for like almost like doing my null space, right? Then my u vector must be the two, one, and three. And that came from here, my free variables and my um, dependent variables. And if you want to think about it as your pivots. So this is the um, coefficients as if I were solving this x sub one, x sub two, and x sub three, just like I did when I was finding my null space. So I end up with this, u is equal to s, and then this vector. So all I have to do is show that if I take my u vector, my eigenvector is what we think it is, is equal to some number s in this vector here, then I just multiply it back through and see whether or not I get that three times u. So here's my, my a matrix. Here's what I believe my U matrix to be, maybe with a multiplier of S. Then I know that that um, scalar can multiply out front, so I can bring that scalar out front. I go ahead and do this matrix multiplication, and I end up with this S, which is still my scalar, and I get 6, 3, and 9, which is then tells me that S must be equal to 3. So I, do, I did indeed find my... Um, eigenvector associated with the lambda eigenvalue of 3. Now the, again, the reason I put this s here as a placeholder is because I'm trying to show whether or not I'm going to get a multiplier, a multiplier that is equal to 3. This is what I think u is equal to, and I'm checking to see whether or not that s is equal to 3, and, it, and I showed that it is. So let's do this again with lambda is equal to 2. So we're going to start with lambda is equal to 2, and we know that this has to be solved with the homogeneous system. We just showed you that that's what it has to be. Where I have A, my A matrix, minus 2, my, that's because that's my lambda, I'm multiplied by my identity matrix size 3, and I end up with this. And once again, I'm going to row reduce echelon form this. And in this case, I have two free variables. I have one here and one here. Remember, this is an augmented matrix. It's a homogeneous system that has that column of zeros. So I have two free variables. This variable is a free variable, and this variable is a free variable, which means I'm going to have to check two vectors here. So I have S sub 1. Again, that is just checking to see if whether or not this is going to be what I expect it to be, which is negative 2. And I don't know that yet, so I'm going to put S sub 1 as a placeholder. And then this represents the coefficients on the free variable. So when, again, like if I'm doing my null space and I would have said, oh, okay, I have my x sub one is free and x, or excuse me, x sub two is free. My x sub one is in terms of it. And then of course this would be my x sub three is my free variable and my x sub one is in terms of it. And so as long as at least one of these are non-zero, so I have S sub 1 and S sub 2, as long as one of these possible um, lambdas are non-zero, then you will be an eigenvector associated with that lambda is equal to 2. So once again, I have my A matrix, and it's going to be multiplied by my S sub 1 and my first vector, and then it's going to distribute and be my S sub 2, my second vector. So that's what I did here. So then I end up with, after I've done my matrix multiplication, so I ma took my matrix A and multiplied by this vector, I get this. I took my matrix A and multiplied it by this other vector, and I get this. Now you can see that 2 is a factor of both of those vectors, so I can pull a 2 out. So that tells me that 2 is indeed the lambda, and my vector, um, my vectors are negative 2, 1, 0, and 1, 0, 1. 
Now, we know that polynomials are a combination of powers and multiplications and scalars of coefficients, with addition, subtraction being the inverse of addition. And matrix is, if the matrix is square, we get all those operations. We get the uh, multiplication, we get scalar coefficients, we get addition and additive inverse. So it's kind of natural to think about doing polynomials with matrix, with matrix, with um, replacing the variable of a polynomial by a matrix. So let's do an example of what that means. So here's my polynomial. I have a degree four polynomial. And so P of X is equal to 14, 19 X minus three X squared minus seven X cubed plus four X. Here's my matrix. It is a three by three matrix. D raised to the zero would of course be the identity matrix. So that's why we have an identity matrix of size three. D raised to the one is just D. D squared is D times itself, which gives me that matrix. And then going through until I get D cubed, which of course is D times D squared. D to the fourth is D times D to the third. So I end up with all these matrices, which means if I replace my X's with those equivalent D, D squared, D cubed, and D four, here's D to the zero, D, D squared, D cubed, and D to the fourth, I'd end up with 14 times D to the zero, because that's D to the zero right there. Remember, if we have a, a constant, then of course we could write that as D to the zero. And then I'd have the 19 times my D, the negative three times my D squared, the se negative seven multiplied by my D cubed, and of course my D to the fourth. So then, what that gives me is this matrix. So that tells me that if I factor my original polynomial, which is 14 plus 19x minus 3x squared minus 7x cubed plus 4x, it will factor into this, use my usual ways of factoring that I learned in pre-calculus one, then my polynomial, so this is my polynomial, is going to factor instead of having x is I'm going to have d. So d minus 2, the identity matrix of size 3, d minus 7, the identity matrix of size 3, and d plus the identity matrix of size 3 squared. So I end up with this, which I got this first piece here. This is the d minus 2i cubed. This one would be d minus 7i cubed. This would be d plus i, the identity matrix size 3 squared. Whichever I do all of that, look, I get the same thing. It's kind of cool, right? Do we care? Well, yeah. The reason that we care is because we're going to get something called a characteristic polynomial. And what a characteristic polynomial is, A is a square matrix of size n. The characteristic polynomial of A, denoted as P sub A of x, is defined by the determinant of A minus x, x of course being my, my vector, my eigenvector, and lamb, or just x, not my eigenvector yet, it's just my x. If we replace x with lambda and solve the above equation, we now have the tools to solve for finding eigenvalues. So that tells me up here that this must have been an eigenvalue. It must have been 2. This must have been 7 and, of course, negative 1. So if I connect what we just did, my eigenvalues from up above for that matrix D must have been 2, 7, and to negative 1. Let's go through a smaller one, a little bit easier to follow through. And, and so we're trying to find the eigenvalues given this matrix. We, we don't have anything other than the fact that we know it has to satisfy the determinant of my A matrix minus lambda of the identity of that size must equal zero. So the first thing I do is I set up my matrix and I do subtract my lambda. So I did my lambda multiplied by my size two identity matrix, and I end up in the first position of three minus lambda and three and six and negative four minus lambda. And I'm gonna find the determinant of that, 
when I find the determinant of that, my usual way of finding a three by three or two by two determinant, remember I take these two, multiply them together, and then subtract off those two, then I'm gonna end up with this. Three minus lambda, and then negative four minus lambda, minus 18, multiplying those two, and then minus the 18. I clean this up and I get lambda squared plus lambda minus 30. So now I'm in the land of quadratics, which means I can just factor this. I get lambda minus five and lambda plus six is equal to zero. So that tells me my eigenvalues are five and negative six. Now, we're gonna now um, formally um, give you the theorem and again, all of the theorems are in your book for your viewing pleasure. Suppose A is a square matrix, then lambda is an eigenvalue if A, if and only if the polynomial or the characteristic polynomial of lambda is equal to zero. So there it is formally, and we are able to find our lambdas by just setting up the determinant of A minus lambda and then whatever the size of identity matrix we need to match up to the size of A. A, of course, has to be a square matrix. Suppose A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then the eigenspace of A for lambda, denoted as this funky looking E sub A of lambda, is a set of all eigenvectors of A for lambda, together with the inclusion, of course, the zero vector. So now we've got some, we've got some spaces. Remember when we talked about vector spaces? Well, this is an eigenspace. And it just means that they're all built with eigenvalue or eigenvectors. But the subspace and everything we learned before is still going to hold true. Because this gives us that the eigenspace is a subspace. Suppose A is a square matrix of size n and lambda is an eigenvalue of A. Then the eigenspace is a subspace of the vector space of Cn. It's kind of cool. So let's find the eigenvalues again. And let's also find a basis for each one of the eigenspaces. Which, in it, remember, if you remember what a basis have to be linearly independent, and it has to span whatever it is that I'm looking to have as a set. So let's start with the first one. Again, we're going to do the determinant of A minus lambda times the size of the identity matrix I need, which it gives me this. I multiply these two, and I multiply these two and subtract it off, so I get 2 minus lambda squared minus 1. Multiply everything up and combine up like terms, and I get lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 3. It factors, we're in the land of polynomials, so it is lambda minus 1 and lambda minus 3. So those are my eigenvalues of 1 and 3. Now we're going to find the eigenvectors. And the way that we're going to find the eigenvectors is that we know that the A minus the identity matrix is going to be multiplied by U must be equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my my a, subtract off the identity matrix. So again, my a was 2, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 1, 2. Subtract off the identity matrix of the same size. So I get 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to augment on a column of zeros because, of course, with the column of zero, we're solving that homogeneous system. I'm going to reduce row echelon. I end up with this which tells me that this is a free variable and this is a dependent. So I again, I go back to what I did in my previous examples. I have my general solution is going to be u sub 1. This is what I believe that my eigenvector is going to be, is equal to s, some number s times 1. But the basis for lambda sub 1 equaling 1 is the 1, 1. This is my basis right there. Not that multiplier, just the, the 1 and 1. Similarly, I'm going to do the same thing for my lambda sub 2 is equal to 3. So here, remember I had my lambda is equal to 1. That's why there was a 1 there. This is my lambda equaling to 3. So we've, we've done this before. So we take our, our A matrix. We subtract off 3 times my identity matrix. It has to equal U. Or time, multiplied by my... Um, eigenvector has to be equal to zero. So I have, here's my A minus three times my identity matrix, and I get this. I then augment on my zeros, because I'm solving that homogeneous system, and I get um, 
And to reduce row echelon form is this. I get a free variable and a dependent. And I end up with the general solution, which is S. And of course, we know what S is going to be. It should be 3. And this negative 1 and 1 gives me the basis for my lambda 3. Which brings us to this. Suppose A is a square matrix of size n, and lambda is an eigenvalue of A. Then check this out that my eigenspace of A from lambda is the null space of this, the null space of A minus lambda I n. So let's find again, let's find the eigenvalues and the basis for each one of the eigenspaces. So of course, the first thing I'm going to do is I know that I'm going to have the determinant of my A matrix minus lambda, any lambda, just lambda. We don't have subscripts here yet. Multiplied by my identity matrix of size 3 will give me these in the diagonal because that's where my identity matrix is. I'm going to find my determinant. However, I like to find my 3 by 3 determinant, and this is what I end up with. And then when I factor this, I got negative lambda, lambda plus 2, and lambda minus 1. So my eigenvalues are negative 2, 0, and 1. Let's just start out with the first one of negative 2. So I have a minus negative 2, so it becomes a plus 2, I, um, the identity matrix is size 3, multiplied by my u, which is my eigenvector is what I'm trying to find, n is equal 0. Again, I augment on and solve that homogeneous system. Bam, just like that. And I have one free variable. It's my x sub 3. And I end up with my u1, my first eigenvector, equal to s. And we know what s is. It's a negative 2. And I end up with 1, 0, negative 1. This is not a free variable. That's why there's a 0 right there. And so I end up with my eigenspace. The basis for my eigenspace for this particular lambda is equal to this. Now we're going to do the next one, which is 0. Because of the fact that I have 0 multiplied by my identity matrix, it is just my matrix A multiplied by my eigenvector. And it has to equal 0. So again, I augment on my row, my column of zeros, solve that homogeneous system, and I end up with this. And that gives us, not this, because clearly I like to repeat myself more than once. I'm just going to kind of cross all that out. So take that out of your notes. It gives me this, which is u sub 2 is equal to s, 0, 1, 1, which gives me the lambda sub 2 is equal for the 0, is not going to be the 0 vector for my um, my second eigenvector, is not going to be 0 vector, just because lambda 2 is 0, that doesn't mean my eigenvector will be 0. And then of course I have my last one, which is lambda sub 3, and this is going to give me the homogeneous system that's equal to this, and we end up with, of course, my very last one, which is my lambda sub 3, when it is lambda sub 3 is equal to 1. Here is the basis for my eigenspace. Some other things that we pick up, so suppose A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvector of A. Then the algebraic multiplicity of lambda, as noted as the alpha sub A of lambda, is the highest power of x minus lambda that divides the characteristic polynomial. So that's similar to when we were looking at the multiplicity of the um, zeros of a polynomial. Now we're talking about the multiplicity of the um, lambdas. And we call it alpha sub a of lambda. Also what we get is the geometric multiplicity of eigenvalues. Suppose a is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue. Then the geometric multiplicity of lambda, noted with this gamma sub a of of lambda, that should be lambda, not gamma, this should be lambda, is the dimension of the eigenspace. And now remember, dimension means the number of vectors that are needed for the basis. So the geometric multiplicity of lambda, noted as 
gamma sub a is the dimensions or the number of uh, basis vectors in the eigenspace. Now, every single eigenvalue must have at least one eigenvector associated to it. So the eigenspace is not trivial, and my lambda, my gamma sub a of a lambda must be greater than zero. That's always true. So let's do another example. Here is my a. I want to find my um, eigenvalues, and I want to find my basis for each eigenspace. So you're like, okay, what do we do? And you're like, mm, I know how to do this. The very first thing I'm going to do, of course, is I'm going to find the determinant of my A matrix, my three by three matrix, minus lambda multiplied by my identity matrix. And those, of course, end up in the diagonal. That's where my lambdas ended up. I find my dimensions in my usual way. And I get negative three lambda plus four lambda squared minus four lambda. I factor out a negative lambda. And of course, then I ended up with a perfect square trinomial that does factor into lambda, lambda minus two, the quantity squared. So I have lambda sub one is equal to zero and I have lambda sub two is equal to two. Now it has a multiplicity of two. Well, how's that gonna shake out? Let's, let's look at that. So we are gonna start out with our first lambda, which is equal to zero. We put in our first lambda equal to zero. We just have the A matrix multiplied by the U and of course we augment on our homogeneous system. So we augment on that column of zeros. And we end up with our first general solution, which is lambda uh, u, my first eigenvector, is going to be equal to some s. And then with the 1, 1, 1, which is, of course, my eigenspace, uh, the basis of my eigenspace, now, if we turn to looking at lambda sub 2 is equal to 2, we form the augmented system just like we did before. So that's no surprise. Augment on. There we go. This time, when we do back substitution, we get the two vectors here. And we get our lambda sub 2 is going to give us the two vectors, 1, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0. So I ended up with the two eigenvectors for this lambda sub 2, and it also had a multiplicity of 2. Hmm. And anyways, and there's my eigenspace, which has a dimension of 2. Hmm. Here's a whole bunch of important outcomes that come from what we've been doing. The first thing is, if A is a square matrix, and we have a set of eigenvectors, the set S, which is made up of eigenvectors, with the distinct eigenvalues, then S, that set S, is going to be a linearly independent set. So all of those eigenvectors we have been finding will be linearly independent from each other. If A is a square matrix, then A is non-singular if and only if lambda, one of the lambdas, is equal to zero. If A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then if I multiply it my lambda by a scalar, it will be an eigenvalue of my a matrix multiplied by that same scalar. If A is a matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A and S, which is the multiplicity, is greater than or equal to zero, then S and where S is, a, is an element of the integer, so it's an integer, then the lambda of S, so like my before I had the two squared, um, had, a, had it twice, or had my lambda is equal to two twice, is an eigenvalue of A, S, A with the same power. If A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A and Q of X is a polynomial with a variable X, then Q of lambda is an eigenvalue of the matrix Q of A. If A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then the inverse lambda is an eigenvalue of A inverse. If A is a square matrix and lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then lambda is an eigenvalue of its transpose. If A is a square matrix with real entries and X is an eigenvector for A for the eigen, with the eigenvalue of lambda, then the conjugate, we'll call it X bar, is an eigenvalue with the eigen, is an eigenvector of A with the eigenvalue of its conjugate lambda. If A is a square matrix of N, then the characteristic polynomial A, P of A of X, is of degree N. 
So my characteristic polynomial, you know you've made a mistake if you end up with a polynomial of degree 3 and your size of your matrix is a 2, is a 2 by 2. You know that you're going to have a problem there. Or similarly, if you have a matrix that's a 3 by 3 and your polynomial, your characteristic polynomial is a degree 2, you made a mistake. So you're, they must match in size. Your characteristic polynomial has to be the same degree as the size of n of a. So if it's a 4 by 4 a, then you better have a characteristic polynomial of degree 4. It's just a check for yourself. If we have lambda 1 to lambda k are distinct, that means they're non-repeating eigenvalues of a square matrix A of size n, then if I take my lambda of A, the summation of my lambda sub A of my eigenvalues, they must equal n as well. If A is a square matrix of n and lambda is an eigenvalue, then 1 has to be greater than or equal to my gamma sub A of lambda, which has to be less than or equal to my alpha sub a of lambda, which has to be less than or equal to n. Last couple of things. If a is a square matrix of size n, then a cannot have more than n distinct eigenvalues. So if you have a size 3 matrix, a 3 by 3 matrix, you can't have 4 eigenvalues. At most you're going to get is 3 distinct ones, which means they're non-repeating. You could have one that is repeating, and you should have one that repeats three times, but you're never going to have more than the size of your matrix in. If A is a Hermiton matrix, now remember Hermiton where it's self-adjoint, where the original matrix is equal to its adjoint, then and, and lambda is an eigenvalue, then lambda has to be a real number. You're not going to get a complex number when you have a Hermiton matrix. If A is a Hermiton matrix and X and Y are eigenvectors of A with a different eigenvalues than X and Y, which are eigenvectors, must be orthogonal vectors. So we're going to come back to that. And then, of course, we are now going to look one more time at our non-singular matrix equivalents. And what we picked up was this. Lambda equals to zero is not an eigenvalue of A. That's the new one that we picked up. So lambda is equal to zero is not an eigenvalue of A. That's our new one. And that's it for eigenvectors, eigenvalues, and their properties.